Welcome to Women Lead TV, brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Beauchamp, owner of The Champ Group and executive director on the John Maxwell team. I'm excited to be your host of this show called Crossing Bridges, where we talk about challenges that women in business experience, where they started and how they got from where they started to where they are today and where they're going. And I'm so excited because I have a very special guest here today, Jackie Ubani. Jackie, so excited to have you today. Jackie, you have a long title, so I'm going to ask you to share with the guests what exactly is your title? Yes, well, thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I'm a cardiologist uh, and an electrophysiologist. So what that is, is a cardiologist with a subspecialty in abnormal heart rhythm. So patients with abnormal heart rhythms are the patients that I take care of. Okay, see that was a mouthful. So I'm glad I had Jackie say it. Dr. <laughs> Jackie Ubani. Jackie, you have such an interesting story. I want to start with the present because you recently started your own practice. So, you know, people who watch this show are interested in starting a business and you probably have some experience that they can learn from. So help us understand what exactly is your practice and tell us where it is because you want people to know how to find you, abnormal heart rhythms. I know some people who experience that. So help us understand more about your business and where can they find you? Well, my practice is in Orange. Our address is 438 East Catella Avenue, Suite B in Orange. Um, so come on down and uh, visit me. So yeah, I recently started my practice a few months ago, and um, I really, you know, had an idea of what I wanted to do with my own practice. And in order to to you know to follow through with what I wanted, it was important for me to have my own practice. So I was with a group, but I ended up leaving. So. And so you said what was important to you. So help us understand what what was important to you that made you say, you know what, I cannot get this done unless I've got my own practice. What what were those things? Well, you know, when you're with a group, you know, you just have to follow certain rules and regulations. Oh, um, and you can't really do what you want to do per okay. se. So I wanted to practice medicine the way I wanted to practice medicine. So in order to do that, I had to, you know, I felt like it was best for me to go out on my own. So you took a leap of faith. I sure did. And how do you want to do things, Jackie? Because that's what was important to you, is doing things the way you want, the way that you know you want to take care of your patients to make sure they have the best health. So can you share with us a little bit about what some of those things were? Well, I wanted to see, you know, the kinds of patients that, you know, that I really you know, have the expertise in taking care of. So abnormal heart rhythms, I really wanted to just focus on that. Okay. And that was really one of the biggest reasons that I ended up having my own practice. Okay. So Jackie, you know, when I met you and you told me that you were a cardiologist and the physiologic, electrophysiologist, I was not sure what that was. And my thinking was this, there cannot be very many female cardiologists and I'm pretty sure there are not a lot of black female cardiologists. So what I thought was Jackie must have crossed some bridges. There must have been some obstacles that she experienced. So share a little bit about that. I mean, you said that you always knew you wanted to be a doctor and then you chose cardiology. But you know, if you don't mind, help us understand a little bit, maybe some challenges that you've experienced as a woman and as a black woman. So, yeah, I mean, I've always wanted to be a doctor. Actually, I didn't start out wanting to be a cardiologist, but I've always known that I wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, one of the biggest challenges is the financing. How do you right. afford medical school? I didn't come from a wealthy family, so that was a big barrier that I had to overcome. Okay. So what I ended up doing was joining the military, uh, which they ended up paying for my education, which actually joining the military ended up being the best decision I've made. Why is it that? Turned out to, it turned out to be um, a good thing for me because when you're a physician in the military, you get to do other things. You get more experience, you know, other than just being in the hospital 24 seven and, you know, taking care of uh, patients 24 seven, you get the opportunity to do a whole lot more. When I was in the military, I got to travel all over the world. I was oh, nice. doing um, medevacs, you know, medevacing patients from one country wow. to the other, you know, going out to see, you know, they have a, a ship uh, a hospital ship called the Mercy. I was, you know, I had the opportunity to be on the Mercy for a few days, test out the equipment and things like that. So I got this vast experience that I wouldn't have 
gotten if I just went straight through um, in the medical system. Oh, so you were in the Navy? I sure was. Yes. Okay, and, and how did you choose the Navy? Um, it was just a fluke, really. <laughs> I was in medical school and you know I really wanted to be a doctor. So when I got to Boston, you know, it just didn't occur to me how much it would cost. Well, okay. <laughs> so after the first year and you receive your bill uh -oh. and you say, Oh my God. And I just happened to turn around and the Navy recruiting came in. Oh right wow, there. it was meant to be. Yeah, so it wasn't like something that I, I really didn't even think about it. Okay. I just turned around and I saw them and I just walked up there and I signed up without telling oh. any of my family members. So. Oh wow. So that was interesting. And so that is interesting. You said a couple things that I think were interesting. One is, you know, we have so many opportunities right around us. All we need to do is stop and look around us. You went there and weren't even thinking about the Navy and bam, there exactly. they were. And exactly. you said, there's my opportunity. I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to pay for this exactly. amazing bill. Exactly. And so I think that's a good lesson, you yes. know, is that we, we sometimes are so frustrated and we're looking all around and if we just stop and look in front of us, then we see the opportunity that we need. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that 100%. Good for you. Good for you. And Jackie, so you graduated from where? From medical school. I went to Boston University. Okay. Yes. Awesome. And you're actually from Nigeria. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. So I was uh, born in uh, Nigeria. My parents, well, my father is Nigerian. Uh, he was here in the United States. Uh, getting an education he met my mother who's an american uh -huh. so they got married and she moved to nigeria with him um, and so i was born there and after several years we moved back here okay yes. all right so you really grew up in the united states i did did yes. you grow up in california yes in los angeles okay okay <laughs> awesome so you've been in california for a long time you went to boston now jackie you said that you went to school for six years. When Jackie told me 16 years, I thought she is committed. Yes. So Jackie, what's behind that commitment? What I mean, you have to really be committed and determined. You do. I mean, and you, you have to be do. smart. So let me yeah, just tell you that. Yeah, oh, before I forget, I want to thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I want to make sure I thank you for your service because we always appreciate that and we need it. You said you got opportunities that you wouldn't have. Yes. Other people got opportunities too because Absolutely. you got to take care of them. Oh, so, thank so, so thank you for your service. <laughs> so 16 years is a long time, Jackie. What made you do that? I mean, it is a big commitment. So I, I feel like, you, you know, you can't do something like this unless you really want to. I think, I felt right. like I had a calling. Okay. This was my calling and I had to do it no matter what, you know, no matter the cost. So. I never looked at it as 16 years and oh my god it's a long time right it was just something i had to do okay and it was just part of what you had to do it, it, was, it yes. was what it was yeah it was what it was i call it my internal gps it was okay. just telling me this is what you had to do and it was just the direction i ended up going in and i don't regret it i mean it went by so quickly now I'm, that's nice i'm happy yeah, it was <laughs> so worth it it was worth it this is where i'm supposed to be so another bridge that you shared with me that you crossed is that you love the military and then it was time to cross a bridge. You were here and you wanted to get there. So help help us understand, give us a little bit of insight. When, what made you decide to move out of the military and go, uh, when did you do that? What did you do when you left the military and why did you leave the military? So I'd been in the military for 12 years. It was, it was a great time. Uh -huh. um, at the end of 12 years, I felt it was time to leave the military because I would say my direction was changing. Okay. So the thing about the military is the longer you're in the military, uh, the more they want you to do more administrative duties, <laughs> Okay. You know, which includes going to meetings 24 hours a day and, and, and those kinds of things. Uh -huh. And my calling was I wanted to be a clinician. I wanted to see patients. I mean, I went to school for 16 years, right. for crying out loud. That's what I want. I want to direct patients' care. And when they were telling me that, you know, in order for you to, you know, be promoted, and in order for you to stay, you know, in the military for a long period of time, you need to kind of leave the clinical work behind and go to the admin side. It just it wasn't for me. Okay. So that's another interesting thing there. You've had an opportunity to get a promotion, and you chose a promotion in a different form. Yes. Meaning that you were very clear that you went to school for 16 years because you wanted to take care of patients. Yes. 
And in that capacity, you would have been in meetings. You sounded like, I am not trying to be in meetings all the time because it would have taken you away from your real passion. Exactly. So what kind of lesson do you think that, that, that can transfer to people who are watching right now? I would say, you know, follow your gut instinct. If you have a feeling that this is what you want to do, don't let other people derail you mm, and mm. try to dangle promotion in front of you mm. to do something that you don't really want to do. You're just not going to be happy with that decision. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel like I'm really happy right now. I, I felt like I'm, I feel like I made the right decision because I didn't see myself, you know, being in meetings. And I mean, granted, it was leadership positions, but it just was not my dream. Okay. Oh. And so I chose to follow my dream. Oh. And I think, you know, it worked out. That is powerful because people watching are trying to figure out, you know what, I've been doing this job for a while, but that's not my passion. That was my experience. I was doing a job which had a lot of benefits to it. However, it wasn't my passion. Exactly. And so we have to just take that leap exactly. and, and not, because you know what's going to be worse? Is the regret. Exactly. We do not want to have regrets. Exactly. Right? We don't want exactly. to be in, live in regret. Exactly. So what you did was you decided to take a different path, yes. maybe one that was less traveled, yes. because you were determined to do what you set out to do many years ago when Absolutely. you were young. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So then I think we're about ready to wrap up, Jackie. Okay. I want to ask you if there is any quote or any book in particular, something that you know kept you going. I mean, you had this dream, and it was hard. You had challenges, obstacles, and a lot of learning to do all the time. So, what what kept you going? Is there a particular quote that you can share, or a book that you, or a book or so that you've read that you think can help other people? Um, I don't have a quote or a book. I would just have to say that. You know, my convictions about my dream were just so strong. Okay. And nobody could talk me out of it. I mean, there were, of course, ups and downs. There were times where, you know, you felt like you wanted to give up because the pressure was, you know, too much. And during those times, I had my mom, who I would call on the phone and talk to, and she would give me encouragement those moms. to pick me, you know, to, you know, wake me up and pick me up and to move forward. So okay. having a good social, a support system was, was definitely okay. important. Okay. And your sister lived in Boston. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you went to school in Boston and you had your sister. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, you, so the message there is, as well as Jackie said before, pay attention to what's around us and don't stress. You know what? Pay attention to who is around us and where can we get the support that we need to be able to get to where we're trying to go, to cross the bridge from here to there. So Jackie, thank you so much. We thank you for tuning in to Crossing Bridges. Jackie, again, one more time, where can people find you? Uh, my office uh, is on 438 East Catella Avenue in Orange, California. And your website? Uh, www.cvwellnessinstitute.com. Okay, thank you very much. Thank See you, you next time.